Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square. Welcome, thank you for joining us today on YouTube and Facebook and also our private sites for our Premium Club members and our Quilt Club members. Welcome, I'm so excited that you are here today. So, I've got a lot that I want to teach you today. We have also want to remind you that the sale that we've had on for all of March and some really great specials will end at midnight on March 31st, so make sure you go to our website, squareinasquare.com, and shop those specials. You can go up to the search bar, and you can put sale, and all of the sale items will pop up. Many are, are already sold out that were on short uh, inventory, or um, but some of them we still have plenty of because it's our regular stock and our regular inventory. So we'll go over some of those sale um, items here in just a few minutes but welcome to our live video we're going to be teaching today on the basic options which are options one three and four and then we're also going to show you how to take the option three flying geese and build beautiful beautiful quilts with them like you can see here behind me and we're also going to go into the diamond unit we've had some requests to see some of the diamond units so we're going to do that so that you can see how you can get these long thin points like you see here and here without any fuss or muss no set in points no set in piecing no working with weird angles just straight line uh, piecing is what we enjoy and what we do and that's really where we get our best work is when we keep it simple so that's what we do we keep it simple in one of the the webinars and the teachings that i did just a couple of weeks ago a lady text back and um, she said i love the way you teach because it's so simple but she said i always learn something and she said what you said in the video was is that when when the quilt world you know puts a label on a pattern they do beginner intermediate advanced master you know they put all these labels on there and so you look at a quilt or you look at a pattern and you see um, advanced or master piece are on it and you think well it's a beautiful quilt but that's not going to be happening in my sewing room because i know i don't have those skills but when you learn the square and a square system and you take the approach that we do to piecing and putting a quilt together which we call the science of patchwork and we do overcutting and the pressing the whole gamut of piecing a quilt we teach but when you understand the concept and the way that we do it you realize that a stellar quilt like this can actually be made by anybody I do not put beginner, intermediate, advanced, I do not put any of those labels on those quilts because I don't want to stifle you or to, I'm going to use the word dumb you down to make you think that you can't do it. Because once you learn the square and a square system, all of them are achievable. The only thing, the only thing, and I want you to catch this, the only thing that will make one pattern over another pattern um, in our system is that makes it I'm going to use the word harder but none of them are hard is the fact that you may have to have more concentration in the color and the color placement that's the only thing is the concentration level that will make our patterns one a little bit more than the other it's not the skill level it's in how well do I want to concentrate today when I sit down at my sewing machine? Do I want to do what I call brainless sewing, brainless piecing? Or am I up to paying attention to where this color goes and when I trim it, am I using the ruler and putting it on there so the color will finish in the correct place when I get my quilt finished? That's all there is to it. And to me that is so freeing because it allows me to know I can make any quilt. Even though I've been sewing all of my life, I don't remember sitting down at the sewing machine the very first time. I know that when I was eight years old and old enough to join 4-H, my family was so excited, my, my older siblings, and even the 4-H world, because we were very active in our rural com community in the 4-H, of the animals and the sewing and the cooking and everything. Everybody was so excited because Jody's now old enough she can join 4-H. She's eight years old. And I went in and won grand champion on everything. And um, so I don't remember learning to sew. It's just always been a part of what I say my DNA. I grew up at my mom's house where a sewing machine lived on the kitchen table. I grew up at my grandmother's house where a sewing machine lived on the kitchen table. And with all the girls and sisters and cousins and siblings, there was always somebody sewing because that was how we got what we wore, what we had in our home, just um, everything. But 
I still, even with all those years of experience, I still amaze myself at the speed and accuracy that I get and the quilts that I can accomplish with so much ease and accuracy. And it's still, after almost 40 years, very exciting and um, injuvenating, motivational to me to know that I can look at that quilt and I really want to make it, I can do it. So I, I say all that to encourage you, no matter where you're at, no matter what issues or troubles you're having, we can help you with that. We even have a what we call a quilt hotline, a text line, where you can text and ask any quilting question that you want. You can even send pictures on there, and I'm happy to help you. Sometimes I get to you right away. Sometimes it may take me just a little bit longer, depending on when you send it and what I'm doing and where I'm at and all of that but I will get to you and I will send you a video. And I'm sure there's plenty of people watching today that have gotten videos and said, yeah, Jody will get to you. She will help you with whatever it is that you're needing help with. And so that text line number is right there on the screen. It's 817-713-2879. Okay, so hopefully by now, Everybody has joined and everybody can start in at the beginning of the teaching and because I need to clear a little bit of my table off so I can get to some of this, I'm going to do a couple of sale items that we have. Remember the sale will go to midnight Friday night, March 31st. It's been going all month. Some things are sold out, some things we still have. Now I want you to look down here at our table for a moment. Let's look over here. So we're going to be teaching all of this, how to make all of these beautiful flying geese and blocks and we're going to be going over the ba this is really the basics you're going to learn the basics today and um, then let's go over here to the other camera and let's look at a couple of items that we have um, on sale okay all right so we have one little thread pack left um, if you can go to the website and punch in um, sale on the search um, bar and you can see what we have left now this is the thread you can use it in your machine but this is the thread that I like for any of my handwork that I do, whether it's applique, whether it's wool, um, any of that. And so we have one thread pack left, so don't miss out on it. And um, some these, a lot of these items will not be restocked, so you've got, got now to get them. Now this one is normally um, a $30 value, and you can get it for $21. And so this is one of those little organizer um, caddies where you can stick scissors, pencils, whatever in it. Now this I really like because it fits any size. We have a pink or a white, so first come, first serve on those. Just two of these specials left. And then this is the starch brush. You put your liquid starch in here and you do it for your applique to starch around your edges. We've got lots of videos showing you how to do that. But when you store it, you have to store it so that the brush part is up. So this is a wonderful way to keep all your supplies together and to store that little starch brush up. And then this is some of the English paper piecing uh, units. Um, if you've watched any of my Facebook here lately, you've seen me working on some of these and I use, uh, this is my template, I use my starch brush and um, so all of these kind of kind of go together there. So there's just two of those left. And then I think there's just one of these or maybe, I'm not sure exactly how many of these there are left, maybe one, maybe three. Um, it's normally, um, gosh, I don't know, 20, I'd say over $50 value, and I think it's $22. Check the website out for those pricing. But the, the small Fiskars, which is, I used a small size rotary cutter. Uh, the gloves, you can get a, a, a medium large or an extra large, and I really um, think the medium large is a good average size. Um, unless your hand is super big, then go to the, well, I shouldn't say super big, but you know if your hand is larger than than average, then jump up on the other side. And this is the pounce. So uh, the chalk, it's the powder chalk. You can store it in this little container. You put the stencils on your quilt and you pounce it, you chalk it instead of using a pencil to draw in there. So it's really a great way for machine quilting. And we, and of course these gloves are for machine quilting. They're the machingers. We teach a lot of uh, machine quilting with your regular domestic sewing machine on our premium clubs and on our quilt club weeks. Um, and so these are tools that we use. We'll tell you more about Premium Club and Quilt Club Week as we um, go along today. 
Okay, and then uh, I'm really excited about a couple of, well, always excited about fabric, but this is what we call the neutral bundle. So you have two neutrals and a black. You can kind of see them down here in this quilt here. And these are two yard pieces. And um, I'm not sure what the price is on them, but it's really an exceptional uh, price, not just a little savings. Um, I think you can, it's normally like $85, you can get for $59. And then this next one is normally $133, you can get for $99. So you're getting multiple yardage uh, free, and this is what we call our green stack. Of course, March is the month for green. And so we did our green bundle stack. And then um, a lot of these were used in this quilt and one other quilt. And if you'll go back to this month of March, we've done a couple of webinars where you can see some teaching on this particular quilt and one other quilt, which by the way, the other quilt was a table runner. It was quilted bound everything. And um, I told you guys that I was gonna give it to my sister and I did last week. And I will tell you, she squealed. You could hear her from one side of Texas to the other. She was so excited with that um, table runner. Okay, a couple of other fabrics here. Now these fabrics that I'm gonna show you are fabrics that are down to the end. So if you don't get in there in order, you may not get them because we are down, down, down to the end of them. We have this one here, which is one yard pieces, and it has some of our um, train in it. You get five pieces, they're one yards each. The three different tracks are red and tan dirt, and then our elements, which has the, the trains and the different, um, different you know, things that you would think about with a train. So these um, are just about all done. And then we have this wonderful blue one here. And there are maybe only two of these left. And um, this blue floral that we've had, this is like it. There's like two one yard pieces and that's it. So this is like a, a blue stack. These are all one yard pieces. There's five of them. So that's a nice little bundle to go together, put your neutrals with it. I'm sure you've got some of those in your stash or you can order some neutrals off our website and you've got a whole little kit right here ready to roll. And those are limited. And then this one here is really, really limited. This one is our um, cannon, um, cannon stack, there it is. These are one yard pieces, you can see the cannon. And the, the, this one is all done in a stripe, so really, really a lot of design possibilities for it. And this is our soldiers, our Civil War soldiers. I have, a, these, I have a couple of these bundles. I have a couple of one yard pieces, a couple of two yard pieces, and then I have two little skinny bolts that have maybe three to five yards on each of them, and that is it. So if you're wanting any of this Civil War stuff, then get it, and I'm sure that, um, Anybody that's into the Civil War would love all of that, but also um, none of that kind of stuff is getting made anymore. So, Are you doing away with the chalk? Uh, the chalk is something that we can still get, but this is an excellent value on the chalk, and we also have it in the refill packs, and the refill packs are great to just put in a small, like, um, you know, plastic container and get one of those little sponge paint brushes, you dip that little dry little uh, sponge paintbrush in that powder in your little plastic bowl um, and then you pound, you pounce it on your stencil. And I really prefer, I really prefer that way for me. I like the little sponge paintbrush that you can get at any craft or, or um, home supply store. Okay, and then um, we have just like two or three of these left. So in this bundle right here, let's look down, please. So in this bundle right here, it's called the historical bundle. Um, it's three yards of our train panel, and it is three yards of our soldier. So this is an excellent bundle. I think there's maybe like two of them left. Um, for those of you that are new, this is part of our, um, our train uh, panel. This is like half of it and it has the, some history on here with the train. And then of course the other side is from the east part of the United States and what was happening during the 150 year of the Transcontinental Railroad. And then this side of course is the 
California side, the west side. So that's the train panel. We've got a lot of um, um, pictures on the website using the, the train stuff. And then this one, actually, I think this one we have maybe like three of these left. Um, it has the book with the history in it, not the pattern. It's the history, and it talks about all the different parts of the railroad, and it has one of the, um, well, not one. It's a two-yard piece of the panel, which you could get three completed um, sections in there, um, in that two-yard piece, most likely. Okay, so let's look at uh, some of our products. In our video today, we are going to highlight the original ruler, which is a ruler I started with almost 40 years ago, the original square in a square ruler, and it looks like this, this right here, and it comes with the Quick and Easy book, and the Quick and Easy book is a great place to get started. It has five of the options. The options are the different triangle units that we use. It has 21 blocks and it has six completed quilt patterns in it. So it's a great book to get started with. And then our next product that we're highlighting today is our reference book. This is your main book. If there's just one book that you get, this is the book you need. And um, this is the one that has the charts, it has the, the options one through 17, which are the options that start out with a square in the middle, so like this. It will show you how to change sizes. It has over 50 blocks, over 30 quilts. Most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, when people text me and they ask me a question, the first thing I say is, do you have the reference book? And if they say yes, then I can refer them to a page in the book. And when I make the video to teach them and help them with their specifics, I can say, go to page 55, look right here. You know, this is how you're gonna do it. Here's your instructions. So this is really a must, must, must have book. And we have a great special um, that well, I'm assuming will go to the end of the month or just today or what? to the end of the month. Yeah, with everything else. We have a great special on the original ruler, the reference book, and the hen house book. We've never done these three together in a special. You have and to go to hen house to find it. So in the search bar, go to hen house, and then you'll be able to get the special. And the, the special also has free shipping. Free shipping. Free shipping in the U.S. If you're out of the country, Steve always does a good job of, of uh, giving you some leeway there on your shipping when we do these these uh, free shipping specials so that you don't lose that on that either. So depending on where you're at and all that, he'll fix that up for you. And um, uh, don't just email and say how much is shipping to London because it depends on what you're getting and how much it weighs. So tell us what you want and we can help you with the shipping. And we'll, we'll Steve is so great with the logistics and the shipping. He'll, he'll do you good on that. So we have a special, um, you can go to the search bar, put in Hen House. It's the original ruler, and it's the reference book and the hen house book. Now, during Quilt Club Week last October, or, or, or you can get just those two and okay. still get free shipping. Okay, so. If you already have the original ruler. All right, he's telling me that if you already have the original ruler, you can get these two and get a special and get some free shipping on it. Yep. So, even if you've got the ruler, you can still take advantage and save some money on those two. And that's just to the end of the month. March 31st at midnight, okay, on Friday, the 31st, okay? Now, during Quilt Club Week, we do, let me tell you a little bit about Quilt Club Week. Quilt Club Week is one week that's very intense. It has lectures, it has seminars, it has classes, it has quick tips, it has pre-recorded stuff, it has other teachers, it has machine quilting, it has completed quilt projects. It is, it is one jam-packed week. For example, if you would go to a big quilt show, you would kind of peruse the vendors and see different demos, so you're gonna get that. You get to talk to other people who are experiencing the same thing you are, and even though this is all online, we have special uh, online groups where you can talk to other people about different things in Quilt Club Week that were also a part of it. Um, and uh, you get lectures, you get hands-on, and one of the, well, there's multiple cool things about it, but is you don't have to travel, so you get to save that money so that you can spend it on your stuff that you want to get. And you can also do it in the comfort of your own home. So on your own sewing machine, you get to watch it, you get to rewind it, you get to watch it again. It's not like when class is over and you walk out, you never see that teacher again. And your project goes home in a little bag and five years later, 
you know, you're digging it out thinking, okay, what is this? You know, what did I do? What did I learn? You can go back to those teachings you can watch and your teacher is still right here to help you. So I love, love, love the concept and what we do with Quilt Club Week. Now this year, our Quilt Club Week is going to be the end of September. You can go in and sign up for Quilt Club Week now, enjoy uh, 2020, 2021, 2022, and be ready for this year of 2023 in September. So those past three years, you can go in and watch all summer. And uh, we kind of, sometimes some of the classes kind of build on each other. Uh, it's not like you have to watch all of them, but to know what we're gonna do for this year of 2023, but they do kind of build on each other. So um, go in, enjoy those all from now till September, and then be ready for our brand new one when it starts. So you can go to the website, squareandsquare.com and do that. So that's our Quilt Club Week. So last year we really honed in and highlighted this Hen House book. But I tell you what, I am obsessed with it. I love flying geese, I love half square triangles, and I am obsessed with what you can do with all of these little hen houses and all of these little flying geese. So we're gonna show you um, some of those and let's, let's get going with it. Let's see what we got. Any questions, Steve, before we jump in here? Uh, nope, we're good. Okay, all right, so let's look down here at our table and let's see what we got going on. Okay. So let's kind of, okay. So everything we do starts out just like this, square in the middle, strips on the side. You can change sizes, you can change colors because you need to for all the different quilts that are out there to get all the different designs that we offer. And that's part of the versatility of the system is just how you can change sizes and colors and get something so totally, totally different. Now with the ruler, so of course this is a square and a square is a 90. When you come to the corner, it's a 45 this direction, a 45 this direction, you add that up, they touch, it's a 90, you've got a 90 degree angle right there. So when you look at the ruler, um, you can go to that 90 degree angle right here and we're gonna put the tip of that 90 right into the tip of that corner square. We're gonna line the first set of lines up over the seam and when we come in here and trim it up with our rotary cutter, it's going to leave that perfect fourth of an inch right there and mr steve i may need you to go over to the other cutting table and get me a let me see i may have one right here my didn't have my rotary cutter out okay all right so we've got this zoomed in so this first set of lines where they come together and touch that's the 90. we're going to push the tip right into that corner see how i just push it right in there it's nice to be able to stand so that you can see over the top of it because you want to make sure those black lines go right over the top. It's nice and sharp or snug. See this grid line? Shoots right through that other corner. So this tells me that this corner is good. So because all of these are lining up correctly. If it's a little bit off, meaning, you know, like that, then maybe you want to go and check one of the other corners. I always say start with the best corner. It's like putting your, your best foot forward. So, you know, if you don't like the way that one is looking, find the best one and start with it. Because once you start making cuts, you're going to keep the outside edges of your blocks in a 90 square off of this very first edge that you cut. So it's important to put your best foot forward. Start with the best. Now, if these are a decent size, I'll save them because you don't have to sew a strip on the side of your square like we did here you can actually sew one of these little funky angles so this whole little basket right here is a bunch of little trim offs and see how i sewed them on the side of my square and then i come in here and trim them up and i can get my different triangle units and my different options so if they're a good size don't throw them away I have all kinds of little baskets and stuff that I keep my stuff sorted with. And that's one of the things I love to teach is how to keep yourself organized with your scraps. And that's one thing I love about these hen houses is these were just scraps, just scraps from um, other projects. So you can see how I'm going into each corner. I'm lining it up like we talked about and I'm checking the outside edges where I already um, trimmed so that I'm keeping the outside of my block 
nice and true or square, whatever you want to call it. So there's my option one. My option one, I left a fourth of an inch on all four corners. So let's look, let's come over here and let's look at this block. This one is one of my most favorite quilts in the world. I have taught this class more than I have anything else over the past 40 years. It's also in this reference book right here. And we not only give you the 12 inch block size, we give you other block sizes in the book. We always try to give you additional uh, block sizes for a pattern. So for example, on the Ocean Wave, um, the original pattern has one size in it, and then we give you four other sizes. So I think the original one, I'm going to guess, is an 8-inch. And here we have a 4-inch, a 6-inch, a 10-inch, and a 12-inch. So we like to give you lots of different and what blocks. Is that pattern? This one is called Prairie Claw, and it is in the reference book. So let's look here at it, and let's see what we've got. So in this top row right here, you can see little squares with rectangles and a flying goose. And we'll get to that flying goose here in just a minute. But when we come down to the next row, what we have is rectangles and a plain square. But look at these option ones. So since these are all sewn in a block, they're completed, you can see how we have nice sharp points. We trim them just like this, leaving that fourth of an inch on all four corners. And look at these beautiful blocks that we have. So in this quilt, we have five. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five of these in each um, block. So there you can see that row, and there's two. So rectangles on the end, plain square. And then in this one, look how they alternate. Plain squares, where the option ones were, Option one here in the center where that one was, and then of course the flying goose, and then in the very bottom, just like the top. So this is, you could sew this together, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It would be like a simple little nine patch, and then you could come in here and sew the outside rows on, completing the block. But even just looking at this, look how pretty this is. And what if you just decided to make a whole quilt like this? Just, you know, just alternate the squares and the option ones. Make as many rows as you want. Make as many rows, uh, you know, the width and the height that you want. And you can come in here and do these any sizes that you want. So let's go to the option one chart. So if you're thinking about this and you're thinking, I just want to play around with it, maybe use what I've got and, and see what I, what I can do. Um, okay, so when you come to your book on page 34, this is where the charts start. And in the very first column here, it says, what size of option one do you want? So here's my option one right here. And so this has raw edges, so that's a cut size. And of course, this is a sewn size. There's no raw edges. So in the very first column, it says, what is this sewn size that you're looking for? Well, if this is a three inch sewn, then we know this is a three and a half cut. So if that's what I'm wanting, I would just come in here and find my three and a half, and it's gonna tell me what size of center square in the next column, and in the last column, it's gonna tell me how wide to make my strips that I'm gonna sew around it. So that's just how simple and easy it is. And you know, right now, you can go into your stash and just you know pick out some that you wanna do and, and get started with it. I love the creativity and the versatility that is available with this system. And basically how you just need one book and one ruler, and you can jump in there and just start making quilts till the cows come home. Just, you know, and you know, if you don't know what that saying means, it means cows don't ever come home by themselves. So it's eternity, okay? All right. Okay, so let's look at what else you can do. So let's look down here at our demo table, please. So here's our option one where we sewed around it one time, but look at this one. Here's our little square in the middle we started with, just like this, the option one. So do you see it in there? So just like this was our square and we put strips on the side, now this whole unit becomes our center square and we're gonna put new strips on the side. And of course they get wider and longer because the square is growing, it's not the same size. And that is what we call option two. Now we're gonna come back to option two here in a little while, I'm gonna show you some things you can do with it. But let's get up here to these flying geese. This is what motivates everybody 
uh, and they love so much with the square and a square system is the flying geese. Okie dokie. Now, to make a flying goose, we have to learn a new trim. When you look at these two right here, and I kind of push them back together, you can see how I have a fourth of an inch here and here, just like we did before on the option one. But here, look how sharp that trim is on those corners. There's not that fourth of an inch of fabric hanging off on the edge. That's because we're gonna cut it in half. So we have to move the points and create a seam allowance in here where we didn't have one. So that means on these two opposite corners here, we're gonna do what we call the two-step. So when you look at your ruler and you look at that 90 and you step over two lines, one, two, that's the two-step because you're stepping over two, you're gonna put the end or the tip of that line right there, right in that corner. So I just put my 90 in there and then I pull my, I'm looking at these lines and I'm just gonna pull it down into the square and I step it over to, I make sure it's nice and sharp right there. I go back to this grid line right here, making sure that it's going through that corner nice and sharp, and I trim that up. See how sharp that is? That's moving the points and creating a seam allowance in here. Go to the opposite side, repeat. Rinse and repeat, keep it square. Now, on the other two sides, I'm gonna trim leaving the fourth. We know how to do that. Just push the 90 right up in that corner. Keep it square the best you can. Leave that fourth of an inch. Flip it. Repeat with a fourth of an inch. Okay. So if you started doing the two step first, which we did, and the fourth of an inch is right there, you can just slide it down. I like to use the horizontal and vertical lines on my ruler to check it with that fabric, making sure that it's staying nice and true and square. I'm lining the edge of my ruler up right through those points. And open your cutter and bam, there you go. Two perfect flying geese, just like that. And I love, love, love it. All right, so let's go back over to our prairie claw and let's look at our flying geese. So here's our flying goose. Sharp points here. When we come back and sew a fourth and a fourth, see your points are going to be right there exactly where you need them to be. Here's your fourth of an inch here. So when you go back in and sew, there's your point right where it needs to be. So you can obviously these are too big for this particular design. They're just my samples. But you can see how little square, rectangle, flying goose rectangle, little square, and those just repeat going around, and you have got a block. This, like I said, this is the one I taught for almost 40 years to people who knew nothing about square and a square, and this is not a beginner block right here. This is not. If you try to make this any other way, it's going to wind up in a box under your bed. I always say waiting for your estate sale. Now, I want to show you one more quick, uh, because this is all about the basics of the square and the square, and then we're going to jump in over here to these hen houses and these multiple flying geese, because it's going to amaze you what you can do. Question? Got a couple of questions. Okay, good time. Uh, is the reference book that you're talking about the same that comes when you purchase the original ruler? ruler? No, it is not. Uh, all of the information that's in here is not in here. That's this a start, a starter this book. is the quick and easy. This is your starter book. This is your main reference book. This is just a little sample. It's got five of the options. There are 17 options that use the square. They're in here. It has 21 blocks, six patterns. There's no charts. There's no sizing. This is, this is like, what, maybe 30, 40 pages? And this one is like 159 pages or something like that. Yeah. So... Uh, no. Answer is no. I have a little almost two-year-old grandson, his favorite word. No. 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 Or, I don't know. <laughs> okay, another question. Well, you're talking about option one, and I think she's looking at the uh, hen house, and is that just a new name for uh, a hen, the hen house? Is that a new name for option one? 
Uh, we're going to get to the hen house here in just a minute and we'll talk about the options that you need and the trimming that you need as we go. Um, if you're new to the square and the square system, as you learn these basics, option one, two, three, and four, which I'm showing today, then you take those options and you do variations of them to create new options and new concepts and new blocks. So um, you have to learn this basic before you can go on and do um, the spin-offs on those. You know, you've got you to know the basics before you can do the spin-off, okay? All right, another question? Nope, that's it. Okay, all right. So um, I don't know that I'm going to trim the um, half square triangles. I don't think I'm going to take the time to do it, but let's look down here at it and let's look at the concept of them. Because once you, once you learn the leave a fourth of an inch and the two step, that's all there is to it. On all of the options, we go all the way up to option 44 now, and that's what you do on any of them. So of course you start out with your square in the middle, you surround it with your strips. Now, if you're wanting to make half square triangles, be, remember here on the flying goose, because we cut through here, we did the two step. Well, we're gonna cut both directions. And so that should tell you, if you're cutting through that point, that you need to two step. So we did the sharp two step trim here, 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 and here, all four corners. So here, 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 and here, all of those, we would do the two step trim. And then you just come in and cut them both directions and you have your half square triangles. So what you've learned with option one, two, three, and four is the basic, the beginning, and we're just, we're gonna do a spin-off on those now, okay? All right, more questions? No. Nope. Okay. Okay, so let's look at these units that we want to do for our, our hen houses. So you can, in our sample here on our hen houses, we put three flying geese together. So, um, let me see here. Let's do one, two, three. Now, if you put two flying geese together, you're gonna get a, a square. And so that means if it's four inches this way, it's four inches this way. The square means all four sides the same. So if you put two flying geese together, you're going to get a square. You can put two together and surround it again with strips. Remember on our option two, we learned how you can surround it again with strips. So now we're just building off of this beginning stuff that we've learned. So you can sew around it again and you can get um, triangle units on each side. So on this one here, we put three flying geese together, which turns it into a rectangle. So when you look here, you see that you have the long sides here of the flying geese, and here you have the short side here. So you would um, sew around it all four sides. Now we talked about color, how you can change all of these different colors. So in this particular one here that I'm showing that we're working on, we did background color on three sides, what I call the bottom, because on a flying goose, this is the nose or the beak, so he's flying up. These are the wings, this is his body. So we've used background colors on one, two, three sides. So when you look at this one right here, you can see how we did it one, two, three, the two long sides and the bottom. And then we did just a strip of color here at the top. And what happens when you get this trimmed up is you get another flying goose. It looks like you have four flying geese. So look at this one. Look how you have one, two, three, four, but you only used three flying geese. You're in, too high on that one. Um, I can see it. You went right above that. Yeah, that one we can see. Okay, all right. So here you can see the one, two, three, four. It looks like four flying geese, but this is just from the color strip that was put here at the top. And when we come in and trim this up, then we're going to get that hen house. This is the hen house right here. And in this one, we did a color here, but I'm going to show you some other ones where we didn't do the color there, okay? So here you can see the, the hen house here with just a rectangle and another hen house. And then when you put those together and you put the strip in the middle, so see how this just goes here like this? 
you make the center section and then another one just goes down here at the bottom. This is this one we, in the Hen House book we call Chicken Dash and I am just going crazy with it. I just love it. Part of the reason is because I have all these little bins set up. I mean, how many times do you have a little piece of a strip left over like this? You're like, uh, what am I going to do with it? Well, here you can make an extra little hen headed to the hen house in the chicken dash. They're all dashing to the center there. And so I love when I, when I finish a project. So when I finish a quilt or a project that I'm working on, I don't just push all my scraps and pieces into one big bin or box or basket. I keep them organized and I always have a scrap quilt I'm working on. I love, love, love teaching scrap quilts and showing you how to organize and how to always have a scrap quilt going. So the background on this fabric is, is our tattered and torn dirt. So I know that, I, so I have a lot of these scraps left over from other projects that I can use, but I also have yard goods of it. So if I need it for my rectangles or, or I run out of scraps and I need to add to it, then I do that. So if you're, if you're ordering fabric from us and you're ordering the backgrounds of the tattered and torns, these are ones that we keep so that you can keep using them for your ongoing projects and it will help you with those um, scrap quilts. So definitely go to the website and get, we have a tan one that's lighter and we have this one in dirt and then we have some in red and blue and so on. But I like having a background that I can get more of so that I can do the concept of the scrap quilts the way I like. So I'll have um, a bin with little pieces. I'll have a bin with, um, you know, pieces this size and just uh, progress up. Uh, if it's smaller than a fat quarter, I don't put it back into my stash. I decide what I'm going to do with it and keep it in an organized manner and according to sizes and colors so that when I'm working on a scrap project, I can do that. Uh, probably from about 2018 till now, you can go back into YouTube and Facebook and watch a lot of videos where I'm working on a scrap quilt. It, to me, it's my brainless sewing. It's when I, I, I just have a little bit of time in my sewing room. I can pick up where I left off and I can sew 15 minutes or two hours. You know, I, I'm, maybe I'm um, not wanting to think about, you know, trimming and color like I talked about at the beginning. I just want some easy brainless stuff. And I always have... Um, one, sometimes two scrap quilts going at once. And uh, I just love them and I love the concept of being able to keep my fabric moving. I know that so many times people, uh, you know, say, oh, I inherited this scrap box and it just looks like a sack of snakes, you know, in there. They're not pressed, they don't look nice. You don't know what width they are, how long they are, or any of that. So keep your scraps organized and that way you'll be better at making your, your beautiful um, scrap um, quilts. So in the hen house book, you've got all of your information for making these hen houses. You've got completed patterns and sizes. There's charts so that you can change sizes and all of that. Okay, so let's look back down here at our table and let's get to trimming on these. So you're gonna put three together, surround them with your strips now, obviously, these are longer and wider um, on the long side, and they're skinnier and shorter on the short side. So what I want to do is now I want to trim this like an option one. So what that means is that I need a fourth of an inch off all four of these corners. Now, my inside is a rectangle, but it's still a 90-degree corner. So I'm just going to take my 90 and push it into that corner. I'm going to line my lines up right over my seam. I like to look at my other horizontal and vertical lines to see how well. And this is just lining up nice and straight with that red goose. So this tells me this is good. Get to chopping. Now, if any of these are big enough, you can save it and voila, you can put it there on the bottom of your little flying goose. This is big enough to save and use on the bottom. So see like on this one right here, in the process, you can see this whole stack right here that I'm in the process of making with flying geese. And look at all of these. Look at all of these that I've just taken my scraps and these are ready to be trimmed into flying geese from, from my hen houses or anything that I want to do, but these are my hen houses. You are obsessed. I am obsessed. Yes, I am. So 
here we are. This block of the Chicken Dash, I've decided there's two different quilts I'm going to make with it. Um, so look how this one right here, see this is the process. This is little, I'm not going to save him. He was already a scrap, so he's already lived out his life good. But see how that will fit there on the bottom, and then I can come in and trim it up and make it perfect. So I'll save him and put him back in there. All right, so there's my fourth of an inch on that one. And we're just going to come around and do that on all four corners. So now I've got to keep it square where I've already cut and I've got to keep that fourth of an inch. That one right there is a good one. So once again, look where you've already cut, keep it square, keep your seam allowances, uh, you, need the, you need a fourth of an inch off of all of those corners. And there you go, there is your hen house right here. This is your hen house. So look how your color hen, your color triangle unit goes in the center. Here's your other one. Then you have your strip that goes right through the middle. And it's just that easy. It's just that easy. And I just love, love, love it. So let them keep looking at this for a moment. I hate it when people go too fast and you don't get to look. And I'm going to put... Snap a picture. Yes, you can also do a screenshot and snap um, a picture. Okay, let's come over here to this camera and let's look at what we've done. And I'll bring it down so we can see a whole block and over. There we go. Okay. So, I have six blocks here. I have six hen house blocks. So, this is what I'm calling a block. It's right here. Um, I can't remember what this one we called in the book. Crossroads or something? Let me see. Ch chicks in a row. So, this one is called chicks in a row. So, this is my block right here. So you can see the hen house is in the corner. So this goes together like what I call a nine patch. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's how that block's gonna go together. Now in this one, I want you to notice how the, the chicks go in. On this one, I want you to notice how the chicks go out. I want you to notice how we do not have a color chick in the lead. There is no lead color chick in there. So this color, this color, and this color, these were fat quarters. So I could get six blocks the same with all of these in the middle with um, one, two, three fat quarters. So I was just gonna make this sample for class, but once again, I got obsessed with these and I love this so much and it looks so antique and old and scrappy that I'm actually going to make more of these with different fat quarters because of course, all I bought was one fat quarter of each of those and um, uh, make a larger quilt and have different colors in it and break up all the blue. Now, when I set these together, I wanted to see what would happen when I set them together. So, of course, here is one block. Here is the other block. So, when I did my setting together, can you see how I did a background of sashing? and a little um, cornerstone, which is, you know, probably one of the most common ways to set a quilt together. But I want you to look at what happened when I did it. I got a secondary design here. And here you can see the little chickens running to the hen house, just like here, but they don't have a color right there. It spaces it out. So this one, the churn dash shows up really well when this one is just the chicks in a row, all headed headed to the house. Questions? How do you know what what size is the center block? Well, your book I guess has on your sashing or whatever. Yeah, um, it just kind of depends on what scraps you have, and it just kind of depends on what scraps you have and what you you want to do. When I went through, when I organized all my scraps, and I got ready to do this at the beginning before I really before the concept uh, even of the hen house block and the hen house is I thought, well, I'm just gonna take my scraps 
and I'm going to make um, a lot of these and then I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with them. So it just kind of depends on, you know, what you can get out of your scraps. I did two different sizes for all of these hen houses. I did a smaller square for my, my hens and then I did a, just a little bit bigger square for my cornerstone. So um, I don't always have the numbers in my head, so I'm not going to talk about numbers, but they're all in your book and your charts, and you can make them any size that you want. Okay? All right. And, you know, you can, uh, the thing that I love about the square and the square system is, is that you can just cut whatever size you want and get started and make stuff with them. Now, obviously, if you're going to mix option one, square and the squares, with option three, flying geese and stuff, you're going to have to keep those squares certain sizes so that things match up the way that you want them to. But like in the hen house, when all of them are the same size, you know, then just start with what you've got, okay? All right, I really want to, I really, I learned um, probably about five years, well, let me take this back. We had a little class at church where there was like six or eight of us at church and I was in my 20s, probably 22 years old and the lady that was teaching it was a grandmother she had beautiful quilts master quilts she was a master quilter and uh, so fortunate to have her in our little group and leading us and I would I was always so um, I wanted to know the rules what are the rules what are the boundaries I have to stay in what are the sizes what size is this what size is this she really had to teach me to to free myself up and to realize I can do anything I want. I can do any size I want. Well, what size do you want? You know, don't, don't let it dictate you. You're the boss. You're in control. You tell it what you want. Or look at your surroundings and see what you can get. You know, don't, uh, we're so confined to following a pattern. It says cut four strips. It says cut eight two inch squares. We're, we're so confined. We really need to free ourselves up, open up our mind, our creativity, and, and jump in and start going. I know that's really hard for a lot of people. And then also back 40 years ago when I, when I started realizing there were people teaching and, and um, you know, got involved in the quilt world just as a student, um, I, I learned about a lady, which a lot of you, she was very, very famous, and I'm sorry to say she's passed away, but it was Mary Ellen Hopkins, and Mary Ellen Hopkins was my, my mentor, and she would show all of these beautiful quilts in her lectures, and, you know, people would say, well, what size, what size, and she would say, well, what size do you want it to be, you know, she, she, um, I remember one time being at Quilt Market and I was at a restaurant one night by myself and she was by herself and we got to sit down and have supper together. I'd never really talked with her um, um, before, especially with just the two of us and in depth like that. But, you know, that was what she taught, you know, and people would look at her books and stuff and they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. What size is this and all that, you know. So really don't, yes, size is important, but don't let it control you and don't get in that corner don't get in that trap i never i never think about what size am i going to make this anymore i just get in and i start doing it it's kind of like this one here that i got started i was just going to make a sample to show people different ways that you could set the hen house together and i got obsessed with it and now i want to make more you know i use three fat quarters now i'm trying to figure out okay how can i how can i make this quilt bigger you know, I'll just use three more fat quarters. I'll make another set of six. And really and truly, when I think about, I was talking with a lady just this week, two days ago, and um, she said, I have three. I said, what are you going to do this afternoon? Are you going to go home and sew? And she said, yeah, I have three projects started and I, that I need to get back to. And I said, only three? Most people have 17, you know. And she said, yeah, but I don't I don't start a lot of stuff and, and, and put it up. But... Um, the point of all of that is, is that why did you stop on that quilt? Did you lose interest? Did you get bored? Was it not looking the way you want to? You know, you know in here, are you going to finish that quilt or not? If you're, if you're not coming back to it for whatever reason, 
just say, I have six blocks, I'm done. I'll use it as a table runner, I'll put it in the car for a car quilt. There's a million different things that you can do with six blocks. You don't have to have 24. So really think about your projects. You may have thought, oh, this is going to be a queen size quilt and I'm giving it to my niece when she gets married. Well, you know, you know, for whatever reason, you put that quilt up, you know if you're coming back to it or not. Either finish it as it is or give it away or get obsessed with it and go back to it. But there's no reason for that quilt to be sitting in a box on a shelf getting dusty and dirty and, like I say, waiting for your estate sale. Figure out what you want to do with it or figure out what somebody else can do with it and get it done. Okay? Question? I think we're good. You think we're good. Okay. So, uh, let's look one more time at this hidden house down here. And um, so, so far you've learned that you can put a color on the corner and it makes another flying goose. Um, you've learned how you can set it together with what I call a split rail, but all these three are not the exact same size. These are the same size, but this is a little bit skinnier because I wanted the block to be a certain size and I didn't want to change my hen houses so it was easier to go in and change strips, okay? And then I, I always wonder, okay, now when I take this block and I set it together, what is it going to look like? So, kind of even with um, this one here, I've been trying to decide what, how to set it together. And I actually wound up, I'm going to make two. I'm going to make two quilts, and I'm going to set one together one way and one the other. So, on one of them, I'm going to set it together. Maybe you can get an idea here. I'm going to set them together right next to each other because I love this little square that it makes when you put the blocks together. And then there's another one that I'm going to set together, and I'm going to put a star right in here as my setting. So you'll have your, your blocks, and then you'll have a little star right here. It's going to be super cute. Super cute. Not just cute, but super cute. Okay, let's look at some more hen houses. Questions, Mr. Steve? Uh, no questions. Okay. Just wanted the website. Website, squareinasquare.com, right down there on the bottom of your screen. Okay, now this quilt was a quilt we taught in our premium club in the fall. Our premium club is divided up like a school. You have your fall semester of class, your spring semester of class, and then we have some summer school. Um, and um, this was our fall class of what, maybe, let's see, this one was 20 or 21. This was our fall class. But I want you to look here at this beautiful block. Oh my goodness. Normally you would look at that and say, wow, that is pretty, but I cannot do that. But remember with the square and a square, it's, uh, it doesn't matter how much skill you have. You don't have to be advanced. You can be, this is all just straight line sewing. So it makes it really easy. Okay, so on this one, let's look at what we did. We reversed colors. So look how the, the square in the middle was dark. So see on these, the square in the middle was dark and the strips light for our uh, flying geese. And look at this one, our center was light and our strips that we put on was dark. So see how that makes those star points, boom, boom, boom. So three together, just like we did here, we just reversed colors. And um, on the uh, four that we sew around, they were all light. And so there is our hen house right there. See how much can be done with color? And then here are the same little flying geese. We did four in a row. And then a hen house. So when you look at this, you have one, two, three. One, two, three and one, two, three. Now, what I did on this one, um, and if I was gonna make a whole quilt out of this one, I would continue to do it, whether I kept them all the same or I switched them up. But notice how the lead flying goose all had red on it. So that makes a red star. See how the points on that star, they're all red. So my, my lead flying goose I kept the colors all consistent, whether I wanted it to be a red or a black or a blue or a green, whatever color you choose. You can make your quilt all the same with all of them the same color, or you can spice it up and do different colors.
I love, love, love this. This is kind of like a train roundabout where all the trains come in and they can circle around and then head off on another track and just um, scrap. So once again, look at your scraps and see what you've got. Maybe you want darks in the center with lights. Maybe you want light in the center with darks. Look at your beautiful work. So see how the color makes the points stand out? See how the color makes the triangle of the goose stand out? So it depends on what you're putting together and how you want it to stand out. Okay, so that one, I love, love, love that one. Okay, and I think I have, do I have one more to show you in that? No. Okay, let's look at some uh, blocks where we have um, um, used the hen houses in the corner, but we've done something different with them. So on this one, we've used the plain hen houses, meaning the, the uh, strips that went around it were all light. And notice how we made them go in a circular manner. Once again, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, it's just a nine patch put together. And I'm gonna show you how to make these beautiful diamond points here in just a moment. But look up here at this quilt, and I want you to look at this one. So here's that block like I was showing, and I did um, just a sashing on it, and on the sashing, notice how there's four flying geese in that outside sashing going around and it gives that complete circle going around. So I'm going to set my diamond up right here and we'll let you keep looking at that while I move my cutting board over. Questions? I don't think so. Okay, so once again, you can make any size that you need. And let's go back down here to our board. Um, so this one right here is what we call option 18. The diamond units start with option 18. And so here you can see the um, diamond in the middle here, like you see here. So just like we had a square in the middle with strips, now you're gonna put a diamond in the middle with strips. We trim it lots of different ways to get lots of different units with the long thin points. And the thing that people have the most trouble with um, is actually learning how to cut this center diamond. So the first thing you have to do, and I use the Grande ruler to cut my diamond. In fact, the Grande ruler was designed just to cut these diamonds. So, when it, it well, it's a multi-purpose. It does a lot. You can go to the website, go to the Grande ruler. You can watch like a 20-minute video and see how to use it and get the the most out of it. But uh, people were having trouble cutting the diamond, and so I thought, okay, if I make a ruler that cuts a diamond, it's got to do more than just cut a diamond. So it's the multi, it's the um, grande multi-purpose ruler, okay? So if I tell you to cut a square, if I tell you to cut a two inch square, then the first thing you have to do is cut a two inch strip, and then you come in here and cut a two inch square, boom, boom, boom. So if I tell you to cut a certain size of diamond, the first thing, let's say four inch, uh, let me see what this one really is. Okay, four inch, that's what I thought. This is a four inch diamond. So if I tell you to cut a four inch diamond, the first thing you have to do is go in and make a four inch strip, okay? Then you've got to come in here and get the angle going correctly. If you're doing a square, then of course you're just gonna cut straight and it'll be a 90. But to get this diamond, you've got to get that angle going sideways. So on the ruler, there's one red line, one red line. So you're gonna put that red line either on the top of your strip 
or on the bottom. It doesn't matter because see the angle? The angle's the same. So put that one red line along the edge of your fabric and move it down as close as you can because you want to get as much out of your strip as you can. Now see that? You know what that would work for? It would work to go right here at the top of my hen house. So this is going to go in my hen house stack um, of scraps. Okay. Now, you want to keep cutting in to your piece, but this four inch piece right here is what you want. And that's what you have to measure. So after you make your first cut, only one time, after you make your first cut, that's why I like having a small mat, then you're going to turn it around. Now notice how I did not, um, um, let me get that glare off of here. Notice how I did not move my ruler, okay? All right, so that glare won't bother you. Okay, so I did not move my ruler. And I want, it's four inches this way, and now I want it four inches this way. It's four inches from cut to cut here. So now I need it to be four inches from this cut to this cut. So I'm keeping my red line on there, and I'm just moving down. So notice from the edge of my ruler, I have one, two, three, four. So this is going to make a four inch diamond. Just like that. And then you would just come in and cut four and four and four and so on and keep going. So now after your diamond is cut, then you're going to come in here and sew strips on all four sides, just like you did when it's a square. So when you get ready to trim, just like in the option, in the square options, we had the beginning options that you can make. Well, we have the beginning options here also. So if you, just like the option one, we left the fourth of an inch on all four corners. So take your ruler and there's your 90 that we used for the square. Um, I'm going to scoot over here, hon, so that can you still get it? I don't want that glare. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So we want to leave a fourth of an inch on all four corners. Then we're going to come to the 60 and we're going to push the 60 right into that corner. Remember how we pushed the 90 right into the corner of the square and it left the fourth of an inch? So there you go. Either turn your mat or turn your piece and repeat. Now remember you've got to keep it square where you already cut. Now on the sides, here's your 120 with a fourth right there. 120 with a fourth. And there's your option one, just like that. If you want to cut it in half to get your flying geese, remember when we did the square, half square triangle, um, and the flying geese, option three, remember how we had to two-step those corners? Well, on the diamond, because our angles are different, and of course we have to keep our seam allowances correct, we have to create a seam in here and move our points just like we did before. So the perfect amount that we want off of these corners, it's just a little bit, it's an eighth of an inch. So here you can see the fourth of an inch. Now when I go to my ruler, I have the 120 with a fourth over here. Whoops, let me get that glare off. There we go. I have the 120 with a fourth over here. And down here at the bottom, I have the 120 with an eighth. So I'm going to use the 120 with an eighth, and I'm going to line it up in there. So see, I just took an eighth of an inch off. There's an eighth of an inch right there. Repeat. And then I'll come in here and I'll cut it in half, just right through the sharp point. 
Now, when I come back, and so a fourth and a fourth, my point will be right there exactly where it needs to be. So the way I'm using the ruler now is I'm just lining the edges of the fabric up with the edge of the tool. And see that fourth of an inch line and that fourth of an inch line? That's my seam line. And right there's my point exactly where it needs to be. Can you zoom in any more on that? You might have to move it to your right. Okay, I'll move it if I need to. So they can see pretty good right there. See, when I come in and sew a fourth and a fourth, there's my point right there exactly where it needs to be. And that's because I left the eighth of an inch off of those corners. So you can see how the system knows exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it, so that all of your points are moved. You can see how the ruler and the system is creating your seam allowance and your points. You, the human, are not doing it. Normally the human has to sew the pieces, press the pieces that are already pre-cut to be exactly the size that you need it to be, and then you're hoping the, the human can sew that seam allowance so that when you press those open, you have the amount of fabric and the seam allowance you need off of those points. And here you can see how the ruler is doing it for you. Question? And those are what go into your quilt behind you. Right, so let's look at our star here. And of course you'd have to do two diamonds to get the four points because you get two out of one diamond. Uh, you know, I see a lot of star blocks to where half of the block is one color and the other half is the other and how it moves through the quilt. So that would be very easy to do like that. And then let's look, uh, let me grab these little pieces. Let's look up on the back of the, the wall there, Steve. Okay, so here you can see the hen house, the option 18, the hen house. And then here is just the option 18 star points with a solid center. So this block normally would be extremely difficult to make, but with the square and square system and the hen house and the option 18 with the diamonds, it makes it just really, really simple and easy to do. Okay, let's look at this one here. And I want you to see how um, we've used the, the diamond here for the same star points. So, when you look at the star, it's just like what we did before, but in the center we did a pinwheel, so we used half square triangles. This one's called points at a star, and you'll find it in the diamond book, which is the reference book two that teaches the diamonds. And then this in the corner here is an option 11, and we've just used flying geese on the points to make that point jump out. So once again, this is not advanced or master. This is one that's just going to take a little more concentration, but it's still just that straight line sewing. I hope you guys understand that, and I hope you can see it and visualize that. You know, normally you look at a quilt like this or this, and you're like, oh, that's a lot of work. You know, it's, you know, and difficult to do. And you're thinking, do I have the time? Do I have the skill? But with the system, the skill is built into that. So it's really going to help improve on your work. In fact, I've got a couple of testimonies here that people have sent to me and um, you know we, we get these weekly and you know this one just this one says Jody I just want to tell you that I've learned more from you in the last six months than I have in 20 years of quilting your videos are the difference and now I'm finishing quilts you know like I said before why are you not finishing your quilts they're taking too long, they don't look the way you want them to, you're gonna to have to rip them out, you don't enjoy the process, you know. But she's finishing her projects, I love that. I love that she's learning, obviously, you know, that's what we do is we teach, but that she's finishing quilts, that, that's the part that really sets me um, in the excited mode on that. This one says, I joined Premium Club last year. So Premium Club is our year-long club and it's a subscription and you go in and join. And if you're a Premium Club member, then Quilt Club Week is free to you. It's part of it. We actually call it our celebration for Quilt Club, I mean, the for Premium Club. It says, I just joined Premium Club last year, but life got in the way. And she lists, you know, illnesses and loss of a spouse and moving and all those things that, that um, can stop our mojo. She said, I even met Jody and Steve three or four years ago at a quilt shop they visited. 
So yesterday was my first dive into all that Jody and Steve are doing, and I'm blown away. I am so excited. I don't know where to start. I've been quilting for 10 years or so, so I'm not a newbie. I'm just so impressed with all that Steve and Jody do. So she actually went in and started watching everything from the beginning um, of the classes, and um, uh, she's just like, oh my gosh. Um, here's another one. Jody, I can't thank you and Steve enough for all that you do. Being out in the country, no local guild or quilt shop, but Premium Club has been my learning center and my my friendship in quilting. Um, uh, and the, and the Quilt Club Week allows me to attend workshops at my leisure. Awesome week so far. Lots of inspiration to get into my scraps. Now, she was talking about Quilt Club Week. And last year at Quilt Club Week, we did highlight um, scraps. So she was just like, wow, I'm, I'm so excited to have that. Um, um, and this one says, all of this being said, Premium Club was the best money I have ever spent in quilting. I'm starting at the beginning, watching everything. It's like being in an environment of learning. You cover all the ways through visual reading, visual reading, and lectures. Your handouts are college level of teaching. I have enjoyed all that I have watched so far. Thank you so much. And then um, this one, uh, we have a, just like the hen house is a brand new thing, that we taught in Quilt Club Week last year, and to our Premium Club members, they always get the stuff first. Um, this particular year, we have a new one, Option 44, that's called the Firefly, and it just really expands on the half square triangles, and Premium Club members are calling it a game changer for half square triangles. It's multiple half square triangles in a row, and we've been teaching it in Premium Club last fall during our semester and this spring in our semester. And at Quilt Club Week, we're going each day we're going to have a whole session on uh, Firefly. It'll be the first time that we've really offered it to the general public um, on what we're doing and how we're doing. And we have a new Firefly book that will be out very soon this spring. But she says, this, this one has been a, a Premium Club member for, for multiple years. She said, Jody, I watched a session today on the Firefly that you taught. The light bulb went off for so much of the square and a square system. It's truly amazing how you make things so much clearer and understandable. My quilts are awesome. I love that. I love, love, love that. I love to get those from, from people. Okay, I have one more quilt I want to show you. I want to show you how easy it is to do. And uh, so if you have any questions, get them in. We're going to be wrapping it up here in just a couple of, of minutes. Here's in what uh, Gloria said about Gloria. Kind, kind of what you were talking about. Yeah, Gloria. Being a family. Yeah, Gloria is a Quilt Club member, and she does not live in the United States. And um, so she gets to enjoy it from afar. And she said, Premium Club is a quilting family. It will change your life. Yes, Gloria. Uh, we are a quilting family, and it's definitely changed my life, and from all the testimonies we get from people, um, and like you, Gloria, I think so, too. So, you know, that's the cool thing, is that Gloria's not in the U uh, U.S., she's in another country, and so, you know, it doesn't matter what time we do this, since it's recorded, you know, you can go in and watch it, and of course, watch it over and over again, and at your leisure. Okay, let's look at this one right here. This one... Um, I print it off because you can just go in and start looking at every magazine and picture quilt and you can learn how to do this. One lady showed a picture in Premium Club just this week and people are like, which pattern is that? And she said, well, I've just taken what Jody's taught and I've used the charts in the book and I made it. And they're just like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. So in this one right here, I love, see how it starts making these curves and arcs. And that's what happens when you start using these excuse me, these diamond shapes. So let's break this down and look at the block. And this is part of what we teach in Quilt Club Week is how to look at a block and break it down. So in the corners here we have little squares and we have a half square triangle. So that's going to be in our corner. We have little squares and a half square triangle. So I want you to look at this. Um, can we not see both pictures? Do I need to move? I want them to uh, see both. I can split them. I can move. How about that? 
Okay. All right. So we've talked about putting quilts together in a nine patch fashion. So I want you to look how this is a corner. This is your option 18. So see how that's your corner. This is your option 18 in your corner. And then it's got an option one in the middle. So there's your option one. Here's your half square triangles, option four with little squares. And then here is your option 18, that Canadian, what we call the Canadian goose with those long, it's like a flying goose, but it's got bigger wings, longer wings. So here you can take a picture. So just by taking this picture, you can break it down, you can find the options, then you go to your book and um, you do it. Now I want to show you one, I wasn't planning on showing this, but just like the black book is the main reference book for the square and a square system. Let me move over here. Here we go. Okay. This one right here is your main reference book for your diamond. See, it says volume two. That's for your diamond shape. So this diamond, like you see here, let's kind of zoom out a little bit. Yeah. So this diamond that you see right here, we start with a two inch block. So on this page, we talk about the concept of this diamond block that you're seeing here. And then we start here with a two inch and we go all the way up to larger sizes. And we tell you what happens when you change the, um, the center square and when you change the corners. And for this size, it gives you the choices and the sizes. So I want you to notice also like on this one, see how the points go out? So when the points go out, like we see in the picture and in this one, it makes a star. But what happens when the points go in? It makes a four-pointed star. So see that four-pointed star right there? So when I look at my picture here, see this next one? It's the same option 18, but the points are turned in. And then you've got a plain square in the center and you've got a different unit for the corner. But this is just, the block's flipped. So you don't do anything different except sew them together so that the, the, uh, the points go in. Just that simple. So in your book, it shows you points out, points in. Same block, different look. Then it shows you what happens if you change the corners, what happens if you change the centers. And this is a two inch, so when you have a little two inch star, you don't you have a lot of room for a lot of different choices. But when you come in here and you look at some of the other sizes, as they get larger, you get more choices, but we're just doing the same thing. Points out, points in, change the centers, change the corners. I mean, this one right here is not hard. This is basically what we did when we draw, drew that one out, and so just so on, on and on and on. Uh, what's the smallest flying goose you can make? <laughs> the smallest flying goose you can make? I mean, you, there's no limit to how big or how small. Obviously, you have to have room for seam allowances, so you can't go for your centers, can't go smaller than three-fourths of an inch, because if your center is a cut three-fourths inch, and you sew a fourth and a fourth, that means that center works down to a fourth of an inch. So logistically, that's you can't go any smaller than that because you know you have nothing but a seam, um, if that makes sense. But there's there's no limitation um, on there. Okay, now this next one. I tried to find a, a certain quilt to show you, and with all the hundreds of quilts around here, I couldn't find it. But this is what we're going to do. Let's look down here. Bring that camera on down, Mr. Steve. Can you move that over? Uh huh. No, right here's fine. This is right where I want it because I'm going to show something over here. Okay. So we've been teaching in class this semester about grids. 
about how you can have squares and rectangles and you can do anything inside of them that you want. So let's look at this setup of a grid. Okay, so what do we have? We have little squares, we have big squares. You can do anything inside of them that you want. And here we have rectangles. You can do anything inside of that rectangle that you want. So inside the rectangle, what if we did the uh, basic uh, diamond? Okay, like that. And what if in this one we decided to do option one? So if this was a row that you were sewing together in a quilt, you would have an option one, and this one we actually call option seven. It's the beginning of the diamond, option one. And see how then you would have a seven and a one, a seven and a one, and you go on. Then in this one, it's the same option seven. All we did was turn it vertical when this one was horizontal. So this could be a plain square, it could be an option one, or let's make it do an option two. Remember the option two where you sew around it two times or more? So there's your option two right here. Okay, now when you put this all together and you just keep repeating, you know what you have? One of the most beautiful, most difficult quilts in the quilt world. It's ones that people stand and look at in amazement and they have to do it with paper piecing. But here, with the square and a square system, you can do the storm at sea with just this simple. Option one, option seven, repeat. Option seven, option two, repeat. So there's your, your storm at sea. And you can see it in the rows here Option two, seven, two, seven, two, seven, two, seven, seven, one, seven, one, seven, one. That's all you're doing. Option one's two and so on. Okay, now this one, and this one is um, in your square to square reference book. And I'm going to show you this one up here on the screen so you can get the overall. And this one is in the chicken dash. In the hen house book. I'm sorry, in the hen house book. Yes, thank you, Steve. Uh, this is in the hen house book, and it's exactly what I've shown you. It's a square with a rectangle. Put anything in the square, anything in the rectangle, and then it's the vertical rectangle with a bigger square. Put anything in there. Let's look and see what we did. So, on the top row, hen house, option seven. Now I want you to notice on these hen houses, all four color, all four corners are color. Notice how we did the gold on the short side, top and bottom, and the green on the long sides. Your option seven diamond, your hen house. Option seven, hen house. Option seven, hen house. Now on this one, you just have to make sure that you get your hen house sewn in there correctly so that they're going the way they should. This row right here, you see that diamond laying down, option seven, with just a plain square. And that row just repeats. Then the next row is the top row. Repeats. Then this one is this one. When you get square eyes, I call it getting square eyes. When you get square eyes, you learn the options. You learn to start breaking them down in quilts. And the whole quilt world unfolds in front of you. And I love that because you can become the piecer that you've always dreamed about. You can make these quilts and you can do them with speed and you can do them with accuracy. So we're going to wrap up here in just a couple of moments. Don't forget about our sale. Are there any questions? No, nope, don't have any okay. questions. Go and go to the website. In the search bar, put Quilt Club Week. Join right now. Go to the website, Square and a Square. Put in Premium Club. It's join. A, those are listed at the very top. At the very top, there's like a banner. Now, if you join Premium Club, Quilt Club Week is a part of it. You don't have to join it or pay extra or any of that. So really the best value is Premium Club. 
you can go in and just start watching any of the videos. You can jump in uh, on our Monday. Every Monday we have our semester classes. You can jump in there. You can do the projects. You can just make a block. But, um, you know, people say, I've watched you for years, and today I learned, or I did the fireflies all last year, but today the light bulb went off. So how do you learn and grow? You immerse yourself in what you're doing. You brainwash yourself by watching these videos over and over and over again. And um, you can, if you're not, if you don't join any of those, you can still go to, of course, YouTube and Facebook and watch, but they're, they're hard to find, you know, as you go back. But you can go right to our website, thesquareandthesquare.com, and you can sign up with your email, and you can go in and watch all of the free webinars. Like this one today that we did was an educational um, and a free learning uh, session to, to just empower, encourage, and to let people know. But I'm sure our premium club members that are watching, I'm sure they learned something today. And we'll be getting some text messages and some emails from them of what they learned today or just how the light bulb went off, building on what they already know to what they, to what they got today. So um, I have, seriously, I have devoted my life to the square and a square and to the quilt world of, of just making things easier and giving you more speed and more accuracy. And um, the last... Um, well, really, since 2019, we have focused it focused on being home more and not on the road, teaching and doing the trade shows and so on. But just um, honing our skills for all of this online, and I am amazed at how, given my brain more opportunity and myself more time to sew and experiment, we have so many new things that we're advancing on with, like the hen house and the firefly. That if I was still just on the road teaching the beginner stuff over and over and over again of option one, three, and four, we wouldn't be able to have advanced on to option 44 like we have. So um, I'm very thankful for that, that I get to sleep in my own bed every night. I'm very thankful that you guys get to go back and watch the class over and over again. It may be great taking a class in person, but when it's over, it's over, and I, and I hate that. Um, as a teacher, I feel like I've got all these little fledglings and I've just kind of let them let them go. And with this, I know that if, uh, I know I'm doing the work, so if you just put the work in and keep watching, I know that you're gonna get there. All right, any last minute questions? Nope. Okay, make so. sure you sign up with the email, mm -hmm. that way you don't miss any of our classes like Someone we did, did today. Someone did say this, I did Storm at Sea, and I'm a beginner, that's one of our <gasps> Facebook people. Of one of our Facebook users say, I did the storm at sea and I'm a beginner. See, I love that. You can do it. And when you join the community like this, then you get support and help from others. I, I love, love, love so much our private Facebook groups for our Premium Club and for Quilt Club Week. Everybody is just so encouraging and empowering with each other. And I love that. There's no no trolls or, you know, people saying, me, me, me. So. <laughs> All right. I'm so glad that you joined us today. I hope you learned a ton. I hope your brain is uh, exploding with ideas and possibilities. I hope you got freed up a little bit today. And um, send me some text on that text line. And um, go in and watch stuff and, and just start learning. Start learning. Start increasing and become the piecer you've always dreamed of. Bye for now.